It's the driest year ever in Texas uh, since we've been keeping instrumental records back to the late 1800s. Uh, it was the hottest summer in Texas, in Oklahoma, in Louisiana, again in over 115 years. And the one-two punch of the dry conditions and the heat really created a, an unprecedented, in many ways, uh, kind of situation for people trying to deal with drought management. We've been looking at agricultural losses in excess of $6 billion in places like Texas and Oklahoma. We saw over 2 million acres burn uh, from wildfires in New Mexico and in Texas. Many, many counties in Texas have been under water restrictions or burn bans. We're seeing uh, uh, business losses in, in terms of recreation, people not being able to go to reservoirs and lakes to, um, you know, to, to boat and to fish and so forth. And so we're seeing um, really just an incredible uh, impression on the landscape, both environmentally and economically. Well, this drought really was triggered by a very strong La Nina event that we had in late 2010 and early 2011. And generally speaking, La Nina does bring drier than normal conditions to the southern United States, including the southern plains, Texas specifically. What we couldn't anticipate was just how extreme the dry conditions would be. Uh, it was a very, very dry winter. And then following that, we had a very dry spring. Uh, and that's, that kind of one-two combination really set us up for, for the heat that we saw in the summer, sort of a positive feedback uh, leading to high, hotter temperatures. And then the sort of continuation of the drought impacts across multiple seasons. That's the question everybody's asking. How long is it going to last? Is it going to get worse before it gets better? The winter has been actually better than we expected so far. We've seen a, a fair bit of rain in, in North Texas, even East Texas. And so some areas have seen some improvement over the last really two months. But places like West Texas, Eastern New Mexico are still absolutely in the grips of the most exceptional level of drought. And it's really going to depend on what we see over the next month or two, February, March of 2012. Uh, to see what kind of situation we'll be in when we get into the spring season. Spring is typically the wettest time of year in Texas, and whether we're going into that season with a very dry uh, primer from the winter or whether we're in a little bit better shape compared to last year, that's the real question everybody's asking right now. If there's a silver lining, it's that it's created some new opportunities for NOAA and for our partners in other federal agencies and at the state and local levels to work together to provide the kinds of tools and information that our users need.